Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Rasan427, and today I'm actually coming at you with another retro pay per view review. I'm actually doing another retro premiere. I'm actually doing another retro pay per view review, and today I'll be doing Survivor Series 2002. And the reason I want to do this is because War Games is actually coming up. This will be the first ever Survivor Series War Games. So I want to do the first ever Eliminated Champion, which took place at Survivor Series 2002, Raw and SmackDown. This is during the first ever brand split, right when the brand split first happened, November 17th, 2002. From New York City, New York, at Madison Square Garden, 17,930 people in attendance with 340,000 pay per view buys. I love this set. I wish MSG still looked like this. If we could actually get sets like this, I love the way how small it is. I feel like that it makes MSG feel even more special. I actually heard that MSG actually changed the set and changed the arena. And that's the reason they can't do that no more. But that just is what it is. That is something that I personally love. But get into the first match. It was actually the Dudley Boys. And Jeff Hardy versus Three Minute Warning and Rico elimination tables match. This is actually Spike and Bubba. For it actually, it went for 14 minutes and 22 seconds. It was a raw actually match. I'm actually going, going to tell you what uh, matches that. This is actually a raw match right here, and you know this is actually a limited table match. And the tables matches they always put on great table matches. The Hardys and Dullies. Right now they're actually on the same team. It's Three Minute Warning, which actually is what was it Rosie and Jamal and Rico. Get into the hot spots this match. The Dullies and Artis take control in the beginning of the match, but then Rosie actually smashes Spike in the head with a table. Tries running into uh, Spike and through the table. Spike actually moves out of the way. He goes cashing through. Now, technically, he didn't actually put him through the table, but there was something later on in the match. It was very interesting that I thought it was elimination, but actually wasn't. Three men were actually put spikes through a table, so he's actually eliminated. They actually throw them through a table. Then Rosie actually tries smashing Jeff Hardy through a table inside the crowd. So they actually fight inside the crowd. That signature spot they actually did at Royal Rumble 2000. They actually did. Then Bubba actually stops it. So they're in the crowd. Jeff and actually Rosie, they're in the crowd. They're fighting. Jeff is trying to do the signature spot. He sets up the table. But then Bubba actually stops him. Then Jeff does the swanton bomb inside the crowd actually do the table eliminated rosie so he actually did the same exact spot he actually did at royal rumble 2000 but it's still a great spot even though he actually did already then bubba actually tries the back body drop to rico do the table and then jamal actually moves the table out of the way so he actually hits the mat jeff hardy runs on a barricade into jamal and jamal actually throws the table at him and the table broke now that technically should count as elimination and even the commentary was a little confused. I don't know. I don't know if the table just wasn't supposed to break, and that was the problem. But that should have counted as elimination. Jamal actually hits a frog splash to Jeff through the table. Jeff is actually eliminated. So now it's actually a two-on-one advantage right now. And Bubba actually hits a top rope power bomb to actually Jamal. Three men were actually coming to eliminate uh, Bubba because at this point, Bubba then eliminates Jamal. So we actually done a Rico. And Bubba Ray Dudley. So Dream and Warren actually come in. They try to eliminate uh Bubba Ray Dudley because they actually all come in. But they all set up for Devon actually come in. He got a huge pop. 3D to Rico for the win. This is all setting up just for that. And they actually split up the Dudley Boys. Which I don't know why they split up the Dudley Boys. I guess they thought they could do something on their own. That's just what Vince is. I heard Vince is playing for the first plans, but with just a split up every tag team. I really don't know why. But the crowd was into that. I guess it's 8.7 out of 10. The crowd was into this. They loved this match, especially the ending. I thought all of the table spots and everything was super cool. It was cool seeing the Dudley Boys actually reunite. Cause it's crazy even think about this. I never even really pay attention to them, like even breaking up and stuff. If you actually look back on it and stuff like that. But again, yeah, this was a really, really good match. I really enjoyed this match. And the second match on this card was actually Billy Kitman versus Jamie Noble with Nydia for Cruiserweight Championship. Now this actually meant seven minutes and 29 seconds. It was a SmackDown match. And actually starting out the match and Billy actually starts with a roll up and a Hurricane Rana. Jamie Noble actually hit a suicide dive. Then Jamie Noble actually hit a cross body into a drop kick. Oh, you know, Jamie Noble actually hit a cross body reversed into a drop kick. Jamie Noble actually suplex into a set out power bomb. Billy Kidman actually cross body to Jamie Noble to the outside. Nidia actually distracts Billy Kidman and slaps him. I don't know how, how that was in the DQ. Nidia actually gets knocked off the apron. And Jamie Noble actually had a Tiger Bomb for two. That's actually his finisher, which you don't know was over right there. Then Billy Kidman hit a top rope execution. That looked absolutely fantastic. I, I, I just call it execution. That's exactly what it is. 
Jamie Noble actually the top rope DDT for two. Then Billy Kidman actually goes for the shooter star press. Nitty actually distracts him and it does not work. And he had a shooter star press for three. And now I get this match at eight out of 10. It was a, it was a good match. You know, it actually built up to it, did everything that it was supposed to do with the Nitty and the Jamie Noble. And Billy Kidman actually picked up the victory. He actually won the Cruiserweight Championship. And this was actually probably Jamie Noble's most notable run right here. You know, with him and Nidia and how great he was at that time. But yeah, I really, really enjoyed this match. I thought it was really, really good. See, before this match, it was a Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit backstage segment where Kurt gives uh, Chris Benoit a hug. It was the same great stuff they keep putting on between these two. This is all leading up to their Royal Rumble match the next year. But yeah, they just keep going back and forth. They're uh, attacking parties. They'll be inside of a match later on tonight. It was and dirt match on the show was actually Victoria versus Trish Stratus in a hardcore match for the WWE Women's Championship. It was seven minutes and one second, and it was a Raw match. Now, this is one of the only hardcore matches that women's ever, ever had at, at, up until this point. I believe they said the last one was the 99 or something. They really didn't say he was in the match or anything like that. But uh, actually, a promo before the match, so they really built up to this match. There's actually a real story to this match. Because to be honest, it really wasn't a lot of story to the match and from the woman at this time. So it's actually a real story to the match. But actually, Victoria actually attacked Trish Stratus before the match. Victoria actually hangs Trish Stratus from the rope with a broom split from the top rope. Actually, Victoria actually hits Trish Stratus with a trash can multiple times. She's hitting her in the trash can, dropped two hole into the trash can, smashed her into trash cans. Like, it, it, it really was some brutal, brutal shots inside this match. Trish Stratus actually catapults Victoria into the trash can where the cat trash can was actually wedged inside the ropes. Sure Stratus actually throws Victoria into the ironing board. Victoria actually is at a bloody nose at this point. Victoria actually gets a mirror out and it really didn't do nothing inside the match. I guess she just wanted to look at herself. That was a story because she wanted to see who was the most beautiful person. But the mirror didn't really do anything. And then she gets a fire extinguisher out. Then Victoria actually snaps suplex for three. But I really would say that this was actually a, a good match. And I will give this another eight out of 10. I do think that this is really, really good. Uh, this is definitely the best women's match that I've seen from this time. Because I've been watching a lot of things from 02 and 03. This is the best thing from this time to me personally. I'm doing some fourth match on the show. We're getting into the biggest matches on the show already. Because it really wasn't that many matches on the show. But before that... Big Show and actually Eric Bischoff says they've been going back and forth since he actually traded him. Big Show won the lead. This is all storyline just to make Big Show be pushed better because he was pushed terribly. This is the only thing that he really could do because you can't really have him be booked like he was and then have him fight, fighting for the Dirty Championship. That just wouldn't make sense. So the storyline actually made sense to why he's actually in the Dirty Championship picture. And you sure had Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman, they keep going back and forth. Paul saying he's nervous. So, I mean, I don't know if he was watching this time. You could tell that Paul Heyman's about to turn on him. I mean, watching it in hindsight, of course, but it's like you can see the seeds of him actually turning on him at this point. There's a promo before the match hyping this up, talking about the Hell in a Cell match, which, oh yeah, watch the No Mercy review that I actually did, which is actually the month before this. Actually, you guys should actually voted on that. But Big Show versus Brock Lesnar, Dirty Championship match, 4 minutes and 19 seconds, SmackDown match. This is one of the matches you can talk about is like the shortest Dirty Championship matches is this. You got... The Big Show and Big Boss. And it's crazy that Big Show plays a part in this. But I heard somebody talk about this. They said that they didn't want to expose either man because you had him go out there and have now Brock Lesnar could have done it, but you put both of these, it's like two people just don't mix well. So it probably was the best thing to have this short, you know. And they just wanted to turn Brock Lesnar face. That's the whole reason that this all was done. But Brock Lesnar actually goes right after Big Show. Goes right after him. He actually spares him. Then hits him with the punches. Go outside the ring. Then Big Show actually smashes Brock Lesnar into the steel post. Brock Lesnar actually hit a side suplex on Big Show to get back inside the ring. Brock Lesnar actually gives shoulders to Big Show inside the corner. He's going on and on. Then Brock actually German suplexes Big Show. That looks fantastic. The referee is knocked down. Brock actually hit a belly-to-belly -belly suplex overhead to Big Show. Then Paul Heyman brings in a chair. So you're thinking he's about to uh, help Brock Lesnar. Then Big Show actually punches the chair. Brock Lesnar hits him with a headshot with the chair to Big Show. F5. Then Paul Heyman stops it for two. The crowd is getting into it. They're like, because everybody realizes he's about to turn on Brock Lesnar. Then Paul Heyman actually turns on Brock Lesnar. Big Show actually chokeslam him on the chair. He is up in the chair a few times. Chokeslam him on the chair for three. I guess another 8 out of 10. It's three straight matches with 8 out of 10. 
is really, I mean, everything in it was good. And that, and I feel like that, you know, it's, it's really hard to judge a short match like this because you don't get that much into it. But I feel like this is the best thing they could have done for this match because this could have been a really, really bad match. I mean, maybe they could have put on a good match, but uh, nah, I just don't think so. I think this is the best thing. Well, whether the outcome was good or not, with Big Show actually winning the uh w winning the daddy championship that's a whole nother thing uh but i feel like that this was best if they wanted to turn brock lesnar uh face because you had to get him away from paul Heyman. you had to make him chase the championship and brock and brock and big show and paul Heyman actually leave the arena i thought that was great because they usually do stuff like this and they just show him just go back to the uh, locker room and, and that's it they don't really show nothing but they actually showed him leaving the arena and scared of brock lesnar in the fifth match on the show Chris Benoit and Kurt Angle versus Los Guerreros versus Edge and Ramsey. They had a great, great match at No Mercy. Talk about this match. I actually watched uh like all their matches that they did up until this point because I've been watching a lot up until I watched in between, you know, the show and stuff like that, just so I can get a better understanding of what's going on at that time. This match went 19 minutes and 25 seconds. This was a smack that match. This was a promo before the match. Hyping it up, talking about everything that led up until this point. And actually, you know, they actually started from that. But Raymond still had a great interest because everybody came in from one side. Then they actually had Raymond still coming from a whole nother point because they actually had this interest stage where they actually had the pyro going off and stuff like that. I thought that looked great as well. But Ray and Chris Mawachi started off the match. Raymond still actually had a hurricane around the flapjack. Edge actually tags in. Then Kurt Angle tags in. Kurt Angle tags in Chavo because he doesn't want to be in there anymore. No Ray even still actually had a springboard splash to Chavo. Ed, Eddie tags in at this point. Eddie tags in Kurt at this point. Because Kurt is back in. Kurt actually clothesline to Ray. Tags in Chris Benoit. Chris Benoit and Kurt Angle start working on Ray Mysterio. They're beating him down. Hitting suplexes on him. German suplexes. Everything like that. So they start working on Ray. Tags and They're tagging back and forth. Just beating up Ray. Beating up Ray. It happens like five minutes straight. Then Ray actually fights back. Kurt Angle actually tries to tag in the Guerreros because, you know, Ray is getting the momentum. They jump out the way, which was smart. And it's very interesting because, like, this was an elimination match, but it wasn't booked like an elimination match. That's what's so weird about it. They move out the way. Edge actually tags in. Everybody starts fighting inside the match, and the match actually breaks down, so everybody's fighting at this point. Eddie Guerrero actually had a frog splash, but then Chris Moore breaks it up. This one doesn't make sense to me. Why would you break it up if it's an if it's an elimination match? Like they'll get eliminated and you just fight the next person. I don't understand that. But Chris Benoit broke it up with a diving head. But then uh Chavo actually hits Chris Benoit with the championship. He thinks it's Curry and goes Curry and goes actually holding the championship now. Edge spared a Benoit for Dre. They're eliminated. Angle and Benoit. And Angle and Benoit actually suplex everybody because they're mad. They about to go off. So they pushing each other up and down the uh Interest way. Then Eddie actually takes advantage, but he only gets a two on Edge. Then the Guerrero starts working on Edge. You know, they start working on him, beating him down. Then Edge hit a double flapjack. Ray Mysterio actually gets a hot tag. Ray actually hits a, uh, oh, oh. Edge actually has double spear in the corner. Ray actually catapults Hurricane Runner from the top row. Ray is a, goes for a 6 1 on. Chavo actually hits Ray with the championship. Eddie actually is the lasso from El Paso. Ray taps out. The Guerreros win. And they actually the new tag team championships. Now, I believe every championship match, they all change hands. I don't know if that's a record or anything like that. If anything ever did, ever happened like that, I really don't know. I get to match a 9 out of 10. It was really, really great. It was not nowhere near as great as their No Mercy match at all. But I don't know if that's a record tonight. Which, uh, yeah, so another title actually changed saying the Guerreros walk out, which makes sense because all these teams actually won the championship, which I didn't realize until I actually started watching it. Now I'm like, wait a minute, they actually flip up title to everybody. And actually, you know, the Guerreros actually won, and it was a great, it was a great match. I get it a nine out of ten. Next, there was actually a segment. Now this is actually a huge segment, which you know I talk about all the segments in between the show, but this is actually a big segment. Christopher Nowinski actually comes out, then Matt Hardy comes out. They go to start talking, you know, get into the whole thing. Raw and SmackDown guys can uh, can uh, be cool together. Then Scott Steiner comes and makes his debut. Then he was actually on Confidential the Latin. Yeah, last night he was actually on Confidential. But Scott Steiner comes out, makes his debut. I mean, the crowd was absolutely loving this. They were all over this. 
I wish they could have pushed him better after this, but I guess it was nothing they could do because he was actually hurt at this time. But you can kind of tell from this, like the way he was moving a little bit, even though he is, you know, slower in the ring. But, you know, Scott Sanders still put on good matches. And I feel like the Triple H matches really hurt him. But, yeah, he suplexes Matt and Chris. And then he uh, says his catchphrase. It was an amazing, amazing moment. He actually throws Matt on top of Chris. Uh, no whiskey. Now at this time he was a free agent, so they didn't really know where he was going. He was showing up on Raw and SmackDown at this time, so it was great the way they were booking him so far. But we all know in the future it was going to get a lot worse. But getting into the build up to the main event, now Shawn Michaels actually cutting a promo. This is where then gets interrupted by RNN, Randy Orton. Um, they didn't show the rest of Shawn Michaels promo, and all through the night they were showing all six competitors until we got down to the final. Until we got down to the final pool, the final two, a Triple H actually cuts the backstage promo saying he's going to win and everything like that. Yes, he's with Ric Flair. The crowd is a huge pop for Ric Flair. And during the entrances, I would probably say, you know, a lot of people hit on Triple H around this time. He probably got one of the, lo probably the loudest pop of the night. Him and Shawn Michaels got the two loudest pops. Like I was, which, which, which might have been because he had returned to Master Six Square Garden earlier in the year. Maybe that's why they popped so hard for him. But, I mean, that was one of the loudest Triple H pops just tonight. That was one of the loudest pops, which is very interesting. But you had Kane, Rob Van Dam, Booker T, Triple H, and Chris Jericho. And Shawn Michaels. Yes, six-man elimination champion match. First time ever. Real heavyweight championship main event. 39 minutes and 20 seconds raw. This match was absolutely fantastic. It was everything that you would want inside the limited chamber. Now, I know nowadays they can't do the blood and everything like that, even though it should be blood, but I know they can't do the blood. But actually, Eric Bischoff comes out, you know, he actually goes over the rules of the limited chamber. I mean, we all know it at this point, but, you know, they had to do it. Rob Van Dam and Triple H actually start out. The rest of them actually are inside the pods. Uh, Chris Jericho, Kane, Shawn Michaels, and Bucker T are actually all inside the plot. And so are all inside the pods and everything like that. They're locked up, and we start out RVD and Triple H. And you can tell that RVD is going to get eliminated fast because he did, like, all his moves in, like, super fast. Like, the first three minutes, he literally did everything. RVD actually hit a backdrop to Triple H on the outside of the ring. RVD actually rams Triple H into the steel chains. Triple H is actually bleeding at this point. Trip, I mean, Raven Dam actually hit a monkey flip on the outside of the ring. Then Roll of Thunder from the inside to the outside that was probably one of the best spots of the match and of the night Rob and Dam actually goes to the top of the pot but Chris Jericho actually grabs his foot and actually stops him actually hangs him up then Chris Jericho actually comes in next Rob Van Dam actually hit a heel kick and a backflip to Chris Jericho a stand a standing uh no a standing moonsault to Chris Jericho Rob Van Dam actually hit a cross body off the steel uh chains which actually he, he jumped off the ropes jumped onto the steel chains and actually jumped on Chris Jericho. Absolutely fantastic. Chris Jericho and Triple H actually team up against Arav Van Dam and actually smash him into the steel. And actually, at this point, Bucker T actually comes in. He pretty much saves Rob Van Dam. He goes after Triple H and Chris Jericho, spinning Rudy. Rob Van Dam and Bucker T actually go back and forth. They're going at it. Then Rob Van Dam had a frog splash from the top of the pot. He had a frog splash from the top of the pile, which is one of the most famous spots inside any Olympic chamber. This actually injured Triple H. I believe it was his collarbone. I believe it was, but I know he was re actually really injured after this. And Bucket T actually had a missile drop kick to Robin Dam for three. Robin Dam was the first person to actually be eliminated. Then Bucket T tries to pin Triple H, but he only gets a two because Triple H got his foot on the rope. Then Chris Jericho and Bucket T actually go at it at this point. Kane actually comes in. He's the fourth man in this match. Goes after Chris Jericho and Bucker T. Starts taking him out. Then Kane actually throws Chris Jericho into the glass pot. They keep saying it's bulletproof. It's not bulletproof. I don't know why they said it. Could have just said it's heavy glass or plexic glass. I don't know why he said it's bulletproof. Chris Jericho actually loads both Bucker T. Kane actually choke slams him. Chris Jericho line salt. And that was for the three. And Bucker T actually was eliminated. And. Chris Jericho is actually bleeding at this point because he actually got smashed into it. Then Shawn Michaels actually comes in. He's the last person. Kane chokeslams everyone. Doesn't pin anybody. Then 
Sean Marks actually hit a sweet chin music to Kane. He no sells that, which I was really surprised by that. Triple H actually has a pedigree to Kane. Chris Jericho Lion Salt for Drake. It's been like a Lion Salt literally took out like pretty much everybody. Then now Kane is eliminated. Chris Jericho, now we're down to Chris Jericho, Triple H, and Shawn Michaels. Chris Jericho and Triple H actually team up on Shawn, on, uh, Shawn Michaels. Bust Shawn Michaels open there, hit him in his face, busted him open. Chris Jericho actually hit a Lion Salt for two to Shawn Michaels, then tries it again. Shawn Michaels actually hit a Moon Salt for two to Chris Jericho. Then Chris Jericho and Triple H actually turn on each other because he's like, pin him, I'm going to pin him. And I. That's the one thing I don't understand. These elimination matches, so why would you care who actually pins them? I don't get that. Triple H actually hit, I mean, Chris Jericho actually does the walls of Jericho to Triple H. Shawn Michaels actually hits a sweet shit music to Chris Jericho. Triple H actually, so we're down to Triple H and Shawn Michaels. This is the money match, the money feud uh, that, that you're going to have on Raw. This is the biggest match that you can actually put on Raw. This is the biggest story. Triple H actually catapults Shawn Michaels into the glass. He goes through it. Then HBK catapults Triple H into the steel. HBK actually hit a top rope. No, not a top rope, but a drop from the top of the pot. Now, I will say this about Triple H. For him putting his body on the line after getting hurt and still taking all these spots, it goes to show you why he deserved to have the spot on the card. Because for him to have whatever injury he had, and it was pretty bad, pretty painful, you can definitely tell that. And he for him to take that top rope elbow drop, is fantastic for him to actually do that and to film to actually still keep going. Shawn Michaels starts tuning up the band, goes to switch and music, reverse. Switch and music actually gets reversed. Petty Gray, he only gets a two. Kick out. The crowd's going crazy. They know what's about to happen now because kicking out the finisher didn't happen at all at this time. Because you, because this is how he actually beat Bucker T, which is so crazy that the same thing Shawn Michaels kicked out, Bucker T couldn't kick out. But, um, yeah, he gets that for two. Shawn Michaels actually reverses the pedigree. Sweet chin music for three. Shawn Michaels is a new world heavyweight champion. This is actually Shawn Michaels' last world championship reign, which only lasted a month. But this is his last world championship reign. I mean, it was such a fantastic one. Be at MSG. Smoke is going off. Fireworks. They got confetti going everywhere. This is one of the greatest world championship wins of all time. It might not have been that great of a reign. 10 out of 10 match. This is absolutely perfect match. The story that they told with Shawn Michaels, him actually building up to it and everything like that. I wish he could have had a better world championship reign, but we know that this is during Triple H's, you know, reign of terror and stuff like that. But yeah, this just overall as a show, I definitely get some 9 out of 10. This is a great, great, great show. Great show. This is probably one of the greatest survivors of all time. One of the greatest pay-per-views of all time. You know, uh, I'll put I'll put this right up there with, with some of my favorites, you know. Um, but yeah, this is a great, great show. I definitely would recommend you actually watching this because the limit, of course, you got to watch the first half of the Chamber match. I mean, you could watch Brock and Big Show, the six, the uh, the tables match, the triple threat tag team match was fantastic, but everything about the show was great. Yeah, so definitely stay tuned for my next uh, upcoming pay per view review. It'll actually be another poll one. Another uh, viewer voted one. I don't know what I'm actually going to be doing. There are definitely some pay-per-views that I have in mind that I'm actually going to have on the list. First Day Unlimited Chamber, Summer Survivor Series 2002. Great, great show. Tell me your thoughts about the show inside the comment section below. Tell me your thoughts about what's upcoming for the Survivor Series 2022. Like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching.